John Denver. Oh, movie, you know how to win me over inside 60 seconds. And while I'd prefer a lesser known hit, given what happens later with this song, it's really a tip of the hat to that character, especially being played on Scottish bagpipes. All right, getting right back into the Kingsman style action. I do not tire of this camera movement and focus on what's important at all times. And it continues to refuse to take itself seriously, undercutting the dramatic action score with Little Prince. Yep, door surfing. Car strafing. Now that is a film opening. Chase sequence incorporated into a backseat fight scene set to Prince. And then another chase scene with mini guns and some drifting that would make Sean Boswell blush. Or someone else you remember from Fast and Furious 3. Taxi Marine is a win. How important is that dinner? Oh, let me show you. Commitment. The whole independent severed arm thing makes sense once we're shown Poppy's love for autonomous-ish robots. I like that it only takes 10 minutes to remind us that Eggsy wasn't always the guy in the mirror. That's a sweet transition, but it's also the first subliminal message. Forests are good and natural, so weed is good and natural. All while Poppy is pointing out how ridiculous it is for a certain drugs to be legal while others are illegal. I grew up on all that awesome 50s nostalgia. At first I thought that was a little confusing and just a way to create a cool aesthetic in Poppy Land. But it actually checks out. She was born in 1960, so she was coming of age in the mid-70s to early 80s. And the value of loyalty? It's easy to nod, isn't it? Man, there's something so frightening about a villain clearly lacking any semblance of empathy or real human emotion. Julianne Moore really nails it. Because really, with someone who makes the decision to mince an employee like, say, taking TV away from a misbehaving child, you want to be sure it's what she really wants. I always knew Benny and the Jet had electric boots. But this... Does Elton know about this? Also brutal and awful. And never let anyone describe you as HKLP. What's that? Holds knife like pen. Bread buttering lessons. Gotta admit, I never really noticed the butterflies in the first one, but I checked, they were there. Galahad, you're late. A wizard is never late, nor is he early. He arrives precisely when he means to. Oh, wait, who? Hey, Merlin, still and spectacular, eh? <laughs> Not a bad Merlin. Smart tactic to build loyalty. Once you go cannibal, there's really no going back. Jahara, yet to go. I think we should do you the favor of conversing in English. Ooh, royal burn. Why are you gonna kill JB like that? Oh yeah, and the human a day after his birthday. God, I'm feeling already, Kingsman. Oh, fuck. Death censoring. Thankfully, Dumbledore's legacy is intact. Kingsman is crumpet. Like toast, but British. I can't ignore some epic buns. Arm, again. You may share the tear in private. Whatever's in that safe is the answer to all our problems. <laughs> that pretty much sums up a lot of the reason I love Kingsman. <laughs> I think we're going to Kentucky. Fried chicken. I love fried chicken. <laughs> KFC is delicious. Take me home. You to play. I won't ever get tired of Mark Strong singing John Denver songs. It's a shame it's not Scotch. Agreed. That's where y'all got them fine suits and them fancy spectacles y'all got on. Exactly. That's right. Y'all look damn sharp. Compliments. <laughs> Dip sourcefulness. Really, it's just gross resourcefulness. For those a little annoyed that Magic Mike took out two Kingsmen, I think the issue here is that they didn't see it coming. Also, they're looking for a non-lethal solution since the Statesmen are their doomsday protocol. You here for the Lepidopterist, ain't you? Anyone in the Lepidopterist, Lepid, Lepidopterist, anyone who likes butterflies and has a keen eye from the last film immediately knew who he was talking about. Or most people who watch the trailer for this film. Oh, that will make you want to slap your mama right there, boy. <laughs> what? So you can take your cheap horse piss that you call whiskey, which by the way is spelt without an E, and is nothing compared to a single malt scotch. Whiskey lessons, or whiskey lessons. Harry's alive! And, well, sure, this takes some of the consequence out of the universe. Number one, he did lose his memory, and even when he gets it back, isn't quite himself. And two, who cares? It's a comic book movie. No one ever dies forever. Also, this is about as believable as rainbow-colored head explosions. Point being, the established reality of this universe leaves room for alpha gel. 
Okay, but where's the brown dirt cowboy? <laughs> Kidnapping out in John. I know, but with Valentine abducting the celebrities, it seems silly not to take advantage of the confusion. Eh, nice tie into the first film. Though, it must have hurt Elton John's feelings that Valentine didn't want to save him. Anyone else think for a second that he might pull an Eggsy and punch his way out? And you'll notice in the background there's a tone very reminiscent of Valentine's phone mind control sound that would make total sense to be the sound of Harry's impending death. It's probably a generational thing. It translates as go away, old man. I like that we're getting to see the acquire an asset mission from the first movie that got cut short play out this time, with Eggsy really laying it on thick and adapting to the situation. Yeah. Elton is friend. I've got to sleep with the target, but I won't do it unless you agree that it's all right. Honesty. Like, real transparency. I actually really enjoy the way this is handled. I'm not a spy, nor would I personally ever choose a profession that would force me to have extramarital relationships. So I can't really relate. But I feel like this is another poke at Bond. Other spies would just take it for granted that the mission comes first. But Eggsy risks the mission to clear it with his girlfriend, and I really appreciate that. Don't put yourself down, Eggsy. I'm sure you can last longer than that. And while not everyone would agree, her reaction and response are totally realistic, warranted, and expected. Balancing your love life with your spy life would get messy. What happens at Glasto stays in Glasto. I can't. Bye, Clara. Also, even though what he does is definitely crossing the line, he makes the right choice in the end, only doing what's necessary for the mission. I'm flying higher than I ever dreamed, and that is all thanks to you. I love these two characters. And Eggsy being the one giving Harry the sincere pep talk this time around gets me right in the feels. Like a storm in the desert. You thought you could slip any song past me? Or were you deliberately trying to pull my heartstrings? Did I mention John Denver is always a win? Let me give my life to you. And not to belabor the point, well, actually, to specifically belabor the point, how apropos are these lyrics as he's actually trying to give his life to his girlfriend? And they brought back the horror movie rattle for the puppy murdering scene. It was a blank! Yes, Harry, yes! My dog would be my trigger as well. Also, Henry Jackson and Matthew Markson, are you available to write the soundtrack to my life anytime soon? I suppose I should cancel that taxi. Yes, if you don't mind. And I do love that Harry's voice shifts back to how we remember it. If I had one tiny complaint, it would be Harry losing this fight. But even as depowered as he is, he still gets quite a few licks in. Also, not gonna squawk at getting to see Oberyn knock some manners into these idiots. Just try not to gloat this time. Yep. Also, yep. I feel like a tornado in a trailer park. <laughs> what? Let the junky scum go down in flames. I take it back. This is my one big complaint. I blocked it out. I realize for those on one side, this is pure reality, the other pure fiction. I'm in the middle and it offends me from both sides as pandering yet insulting. There was no reason to pick one political side. The POTUS didn't need to have a Southern accent and a red tie. All politicians are garbage. Sorry. Probably not what you want to hear from YouTube's most optimistic movie guy. Had Vaughn not been so coy about the president's partisanship in the original, I'd forgive this. There's people this heartless and dumb on both sides of the aisle. <laughs> you want to freeze him? Exactly. <sighs> I love that it's never expressly stated that Champ struggles with addiction, but he alludes to it by only sniffing the cigar and tasting the liquor. Or maybe he'd just rather have a white Russian. So while I do love the bespoke British cut suits worn by the Kingsmen, the statesmen's suits are pretty sick in their own right. I mean, western looking ski suits? But somehow Colin Firth mixes his bespoke suit with that coat and that hat and made a whole new style I need in my life. Nice little touch that Charlie's metal arm dented the metal door. Hey, at least you get this beautiful view as you whirl to your death. Gotta be f***ing kidding! I love how in this situation, continuing to be in free fall slash slide to your death is success since crushing by falling tower would have been a quicker death. That's the first decent shit I've had in three weeks. Silver linings. Also patriotism. He may be a double agent, but he's still a badass good guy. Badass bad guy. Badass medium guy. Also, yeah. Oh man. I realize people don't always stay dead, but you don't expect a good guy to plug another good guy in the face in the middle of a firefight. If we made it out of here, he was gonna kill us both! Ugh, so conflicted. 
They set us up to know that Harry isn't all there and is prone to lapses in judgment, but if you've been watching closely, you've noticed that Harry had actually already started doubting Whiskey before and then at the beginning of the mission. And I want him to be right because I love Harry, but I also love Agent Pena or Whiskey. And I love Whiskey. I'm so conflicted. What's this, a Pompeii grenade? Don't worry, darling. What happens in Italy? Stays in Italy. Forever. But every time an agent's position has come up, Whiskey has voted against me. Hmm. Almost a red herring, red herring. Like they're making it too obvious. Not everyone is as much a fan of Emily Watson as me, but no one can deny her cry eyes. Never not a good time for a dance party. Hey, if you're on board. John McEnroe. Eh, actually Roger Federer. When I was shot, can you guess what the last thing was that flashed through my mind? It was absolutely nothing. Just know that having something to lose is what makes life worth living. Here, here. Words to live by. And suits to die in. Can't complain about gearing up with tools from both sides of the pond. And I'm entrusting this to me. <laughs> Mark Strong is still the man. Almost heaven. West Virginia. If you'd asked me how to improve Country Roads by John Denver, I'd have said, huh, you cry. And then Mark Strong said, you sure? Acapella Scottish Brogue would do the trick. To which I laughed, and then he whispered, hold my beer. To the place I belong. Also, Henry Jackman is still always a win, adding in the background to this beautiful moment. Singing. <laughs> and I love how genuinely intrigued and maybe a little elated that someone as crazy as her might be outside. And since he does this, self-sacrifice. So this final firefight contains just a bunch of classic wins, multiple uses of teamwork, off the charts ingenuity. I mean ingenuity that would make Homer Simpson proud, brutal ingenuity, and a bunch of anti-stormtrooper aim. Also, yup. And even Elton John knows he's killing it. And, aw, the dude and Maude would have appreciated the giant scissors. Also, this set piece is amazing. <laughs> Best rescue ever. Ooh, that's good. Just when you think there's no way Eggsy could realistically come out on top against Robochuck, you remember that the whole problem created by the GoGo -Go Gadget arm was that it could be controlled remotely. And what can be controlled remotely can also be hacked. Yo, Poppy! Yo, Poppy! Do you think one of Elton's contract stipulations was that he needed at least one F word in each scene he's in? Let's make this fair. Fair play. Too bad you didn't make any robo dragons. Benny was no dragon. Fire cannot kill a dragon. Good night, bruv. Come up and I swear if he comes back with a robotic head, eh, I wouldn't mind. Honey, you're so smart. You should work for me. Optimistic to the end. And come snuggle with me. I like you. Super optimistic. But I mean, who doesn't want to snuggle with Harry? Also flirting. Real fine instincts, I'll give him that. More compliments. It's true, the Americans are way more congenial. Do you want to know who was innocent? My high school sweetheart got caught in the crossfire when two meth head freaks decided to rob a fucking convenience store. We get it, Vaughn. How many high school sweethearts have been killed by drunk drivers? A little too serious for this lighthearted film? I didn't bring it up. I think it sounds like a bright idea. Aww. Poppy would have really appreciated that pun. Again, so conflicted. I don't want anyone to lose, but I am happy to see Harry back to full strength. All right, maybe not full strength, but that's actually more believable. Saving your little buddy's neck. And overall, this is another super long take with expertly hidden cuts that always shows you exactly what's going on. There's never any confusion who is in control or what's happening next. For what appears to be shaky camera movements that we established last film were done in the edit, it's one of the clearest fight capturing styles ever, with plenty of yups. And as far as fight finishes go, yeah, that's, that's pretty, yeah. Also more teamwork, also brutal. From now on, Tequila, I suggest you stick to booze. Ah, get it? Because booze never killed anyone. 
I like you, Vaughn, but goodness gracious, you don't have to make my nose bleed with that satire. Yeah, y'all shitting in hot cotton now. <laughs> what? That's three crazy nonsense sayings. But it is perhaps the end of the beginning. I'm into that. I'll watch these movies till Colin Firth has to have all robotic limbs. Actor or character, I don't care. <laughs> yep. Though it still doesn't beat this. Man, the reviews for this movie were surprisingly harsh. I don't like throwing around the old, if you didn't like it, you didn't get it, but sheesh. There are some critics complaining about their suspension of disbelief being broken? Maybe they do get it, but I think they might be missing the point. The point is also not explicitly the war on drugs is bad, legalize all drugs. Though Vaughn's views seem pretty clear to me, I see it as just another storytelling device for him the same way that Valentine's climate change agenda was. I see it more as him throwing information out there for you to decide what you think. Although, as I read more reviews and Reddit opinions, I'm really starting to think people did miss it. This movie was satire. In a similar way Starship Troopers pretended to glorify war, this movie condemns the illegal drugs while excusing the legal ones. I don't, I don't know how else to say it. Liquor is the answer to your problems? It's pretty clearly satire and an indictment of the way all substances are regulated. Again, this doesn't mean you have to like it or should like it. Just hate it for the right reasons. That said, he still leaves it open-ended. Things like, while one distillery is valued at 3.2 billion, Poppy's little cartel earns 250 billion annually. Our profits were 250 billion dollars last year. That's a lot of untapped tax dollars. Or how much more addictive and deadly sugar is. Or that if tequila really wants to be a model citizen, he should stick to getting wasted on the legal drug, alcohol. And then you have Champ, who runs a distillery, but is super careful not to imbibe any of his own product. But then at the same time, you've got Poppy ODing on her safe alcohol alternative, and this kid just casually smoking meth, which everyone agrees is bad for you and has no redeemable effects other than losing all your teeth and death. So the message is, at the very least, the system is far from perfect. And don't be a dummy. And there's also a double-edged statement about addiction. Who would be so dumb to continue doing something that's turning you blue? But also, this is how bad and uncontrollable addiction is. The only thing that really came off preachy, like I already talked about, was the red state president. But to round out the negativity about politics, which I think a lot of you probably somewhat agree with me anyway, but if all politicians are only doing whatever is most likely to keep them in power, it's up to us to do the statemently and kingsmanly thing. So do that. Be like Eggsy. Actually, one more minor complaint. For the record, Vaughn, and I can only assume British costume designers, the American South and the American West are, while similar in a lot of ways, different. Different clothing, different accents. Cowboy, redneck, and hillbilly are not synonyms. Wranglers and Levi's are not the same pants. But I get it, it sort of boiled all things British spy into umbrellas and Oxfords. So the American spy might as well be whips and stetsons. It's actually kind of funny now that I really think about it. I think I remember people having some issue with Eggsy dating the princess after the first movie. If Sniper Wolf and Otacon taught me anything, it's that love can bloom anywhere, even a battlefield. And I know some of you thought it was Vaughn's way of apologizing for the crass ending of Kingsman. I don't see it that way at all. For me, it's another redeemable parody of James Bond. The womanizer who shuffled through different women each film. Eggsy met a girl and then committed to her. Even tried to be forthcoming while still doing his job. Which, for the record, wasn't if I don't sleep with this attractive blonde, I'll lose this sale. It was if I don't sleep with her, most everybody's gonna die. Including you. And yeah, the whole tracker thing was only there for shock value and to make you uncomfortable. It's now a staple of the franchise. Meh is literally all the thought I'm willing to put into it. It's the same with the princess joke. You already know how you feel, and I feel meh. Can I even show this? But the point is, I thought their relationship was cute, and I like the idea that Harry took issue with the Kingsman way after coming back from the dead. Relationships and love are what matter. It's a theme throughout. Charlie is a selfish baby, so he murders his girlfriend when his enemy hints that they may have been together. Whiskey wants to see every person who has ever done drugs pay for the death of his high school girlfriend, and then we've already covered Eggsy. And speaking of coming back from the dead, thank goodness for Alpha Gel. Colin Firth was my favorite part of the first one, and although it was painful to watch him struggle, I'm looking forward to seeing him in future sequels. Some of my biggest props actually go to Elton John for the way he plays his extended cameo. I know not everyone loved it, but I like the way he played it like he really doesn't want to be there, and it's irritating that he's being forced to play music. It's all very meta and waggish. And then there's our sweet Poppy. The type of warm and welcoming mother figure we'd all love to come home to. She's not the most complex or developed villain, but goodness if Julianne Moore didn't steal the show with her crazy eyes. Not everyone can make you believe that they have no soul so easily. Like, there's really nothing behind her eyes. Mark Strong was another standout with his rendition of Country Roads, and I won't be angry if you bring him back. I'm just saying, he looks to be in one piece. Or clone him or something, I don't care. Taron Egerton was great again, although I do prefer Eggsy the reprobate with his irreverent attitude over posh Eggsy. But it comes through now and then. Stylistically, this film is as beautiful as the first, with great transitions and awesome camera movement, some golden circles sprinkled throughout to tie into the main theme, and the Vaughn fight scenes and action scenes are still just as fun. 
the biggest and best way to parody Bond would be to keep making these films forever, and I'm totally on board with that. And that's 2017. I got lots planned for next year, but I always leave plenty of slots to see what you guys are requesting. Starting some new series Everything Great About, finally finishing another series, and I have some riskier films I love in my schedule that enough of you have requested now that it makes me feel like I can tackle them. So thanks for a great year, and I will see you in 2018. Darling, if you save the world, you can have a backstage pass. Lepidopterist practice lepidop... <clears throat> Lepidopterist, lepidopterist, practice lepidopterist, lepidop, lepidop, lepid, <laughs> lepidopterology, 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 lepidopterists, practice lepidopterology. <laughs>